Hello, my name is Lou Marcos and I'm a professor of English at Houston Baptist University. As we all prepare to hunker down for what may be a very long quarantine, I wanted to do my bit to bring some encouragement by reciting one of the most famous speeches from Shakespeare. It's called the St. Crispin's Day speech and it comes from his historical play, Henry V. Before reciting the speech, I will give a little introduction I wrote to kind of set the historical background. The year is 1415. The place, the northern coast of France, not far from Calais, near the castle of Agincourt. At this time in history, the French and British are embroiled in their Hundred Years' War for dominance. Under King Charles, the French had all but expelled the British from northern France. But now, under young King Henry V, the British have returned to reclaim what once was theirs. But the situation is dire. The British are vastly outnumbered, and their spirits beaten down by hunger, thirst, and disease. The French, on the other hand, are fresh and eager for the kill. It is now the morning before the final battle. <clears throat> As Henry's men face almost certain death at the hands of the French, their fellow countrymen back home are celebrating a feast called the Feast of St. Crispin. Musing on this irony, Westmoreland, one of Henry's cousins, turns to a fellow soldier and exclaims, Oh, that we now had here but one ten thousandth of those men who do no work today. But Henry has overheard him, and so, calling his men to his side and casting an eye on his nervous cousin, he speaks these immortal words. What's he that wishes it so? <laughs> My cousin Westmoreland? No, faith, cuz, if we are marked to die, we are enough to do our country loss. But if to live, the fewer men, the greater share of honor. God's peace, I would not lose so great an honor as one man more methinks would share from me for the best hope I have. Oh, do not wish one more. Rather, proclaim it Westmoreland through my host that he which hath no stomach to this fight, let him depart. His passport shall be made and coins for convoy put into his purse. We would not die in that man's company who fears his fellowship to die with us. This day is called the feast of Crispian. He that shall live this day and come safe home will stand a tiptoe when this day is named and rouse himself at the name of Crispian. He that shall live this day and see old age shall yearly on the vigil feast his neighbors and say, tomorrow is Saint Crispin's then shall he strip his sleeve and show his scars and say, These wounds I had on Crispin's day. Old men forget, yet all shall be forgot, but he'll remember with advantages what feats we did that day. Then shall our names, familiar to his mouth as household words, Harry the king, Bedford and Exeter, Warwick and Talbot, Salisbury and Gloucester, be in their flowing cups freshly remembered. This story shall the good man tell his son, and Crispin Crispian shall ne'er go by from this day until the ending of the world. But we in it shall be remembered. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers, for he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother. Be he ne'er so vile, this day shall gentle his condition. And gentlemen in England now abed shall think themselves a curse they were not here, and hold their manhoods cheap. Must any speak that fought with us upon St. Crispin's day? Now, I told you a moment ago that I'm an English professor and have been so for almost 30 years. 
and I like to be able to encourage my uh, English majors. And so every so often when they need encouragement, I use my own version of those famous closing lines from the St. Crispin's Day speech. This is how I say it. We few, we happy few, we band of scholars, for he today that reads this poem with me shall be a scholar, be ne'er so dense, this day shall gentle his condition, and math and business majors now asleep shall think themselves a curse they were not here, and hold their bachelors cheap, whilst any speak that read with us today. Thank you, and keep strong.